Donald Trump made good on a promise from the campaign trail, pulling the U.S. out of the Iran nuclear deal, which he called, quote, the worst deal ever. Under the Joint Comprehensive Plan of Action, Iran would get rid of resources needed to build nuclear weapons, reducing its stockpile of enriched uranium by 97 percent, and limiting its number of centrifuges, devices that enrich uranium, to 5,000. Now, in return, the countries on the other end of the deal, the U.S., the U.K., China, Russia, France, and Germany, they would lift a variety of sanctions on Iran. While those other countries are still in the deal, it risks becoming irrelevant now that the U.S. has withdrawn and Trump has promised to hit Iran with more sanctions. Christopher Bidwell is a fellow, senior fellow for the Non-Proliferation Law and Policy at the Federation of American Scientists. He joins us now to talk about this. Thank you so much for being here. I've got to ask, was there any evidence that Iran wasn't complying with this deal? There was no evidence that Iran was not complying with the deal, but there wasn't much evidence that there, they were complying with the deal. The IAE reports came out and basically said Iran is in compliance, but they didn't really give any details as to how they were in compliance. So that left a, a feeling here in the United States that Iran might not be in compliance. The problem with, with, with verification in, in this field is you can't prove a negative. You can't prove that Iran doesn't have a program. And that will always be a sticking point in, in these kind of uh, situations. All right, well, in exchange for curbing the nuclear program, the UN was to lift all economic sanctions. The European Union was supposed to remove all nuclear-related economic sanctions. And the United States was supposed to lift all secondary sanctions, which stop other countries from doing business with Iran. Was Iran getting the sanction relief they had hoped for from this deal? I mean, was that the carrot uh, that we were all hoping uh, that they would see? Yeah, Iran did not get much out of this deal at all, and they gave up a lot. They, they pretty much cut off the plutonium path for the time being to a nuclear weapon. The problem with the, the U.S. sanctions is there were sanctions for ballistic missile programs, there were sanctions for terrorism, there were sanctions for human rights violations, and there were sanctions for, for their nuclear program. We took the nuclear program off the table, but the other three justifications remain. So banks in Europe were afraid to go in and are still afraid to go into business with, uh, with Iran, at least the big banks are, and that's uh, leaving Iran without a lot of economic benefit. The, the real dollar rate has, has, got, has doubled. Uh, since the JCPOA. So Iran is, is actually losing out uh, every day economically as a result of this deal. Uh, in President Trump's statement yesterday explaining why he was pulling out of the deal, he said that Iran under no circumstances should ever get a nuclear bomb. But Iran's President Rouhani issued this statement after that announcement. He said, quote, I have ordered Iran's atomic organization that whenever it is needed, we will start enriching uranium more than before. Does this mean they're going to start developing nuclear weapons again? It means they're going to enrich, perhaps, uh, if, they, if they follow through with that. But enriching is but one step in making a nuclear weapon. Uh, they are signatories to the uh, Nuclear Nonproliferation Treaty, an original signatory back in 1968. And under the Nuclear Nonproliferation Treaty, they have an obligation not to pursue a nuclear weapons policy. And that has not changed. Nothing in the JCPOA, nothing in the walkaway changed that obligation on the part of Iran. Lastly, sir, Trump uh, didn't like the deal, doesn't address Iran. He doesn't like that it doesn't address Iran's ballistic missile program, and he doesn't like that aspects of the deal expire. Do you think it's possible that Iran would agree to some kind of new deal that addressed those concerns, or, or is any possibility of rapprochement between these two countries just over? Well, I think right now the, the common perception here in Washington is there's not a plan B to go back to the table with the Iranians. I think we'll see what's happen, what will happen. You know, Iran can wait. There may be a new president in two years. Maybe they can just wait it out. And, and it's probably in their best interest not to do anything too drastic at this point. Christopher Bidwell, thanks for laying it out for us today. Thank you for having me, Ben.